Welcome to the foundation of NetApp Cloud Volumes for AWS. By the end of this presentation, you should have the ability to set proper expectations for any application you hope to run in this environment. As promised, we move now on to service levels. How to size with them, what they do, what they are. We haven't left entirely behind uh, the concept of limits in the environment. We still need to expose limits of a individual volume, what it can do, and what a client can do with the said volume. With that said, let's go. There are three cloud volume service levels. They are standard, premium, and extreme. The definition of a service level comes down to this. The amount of kilobytes of max storage of bandwidth per quota gigabyte. So for example, at standard level you get 16 kilobyte max storage bandwidth per quota gigabyte. Or put another way, every gigabyte of quota you allocate, you get 16 KB a bandwidth to use. So if you use something very small, let's say a one gigabyte quota, you would have 16 kilobyte to play with. That would be four, four kilobyte operations, two eight kilobyte operations, or one 16 kilobyte operation. Premium is 64K, extreme is 128K. Now service levels may be changed in the fly as shown below. Once change is made, the API will go and change the service level in the background, and within moments, your capability is either expanded or detracted, depending on where you go. As a service level is the amount of storage bandwidth accessible per state of gigabyte, a quota is the state of gigabyte against which a service level is applied. Quotas rely upon ONTAP's quality of service mechanism. A quota is presently defined as the maximum throughput at the storage cluster. A quota may be set anywhere between 1 gigabyte and 100 terabytes. And just as service levels may be changed in the fly, quotas may be changed in the fly as well, as shown below. For the purpose of example, I put a 500 gigabyte quota. For the purpose of example, I placed a quota larger than is possible, as the area below shows. Quotas and service levels are applied against individual volumes. Towards that end, it's useful to know how much work an individual volume can do. I performed this study wherein I used an artificial workload generator known as VDBench. I drove workload from one client against one volume and added clients until I couldn't drive any more I.O. Then I added more clients again. The results are these two slides. This slide will show random I.O. The next slide will show sequential I.O. Both slides are similar in that you have blue bars which show single instance I.O. against a single volume and the gray bars represent multiple clients against the same single volume. Note in each of these two slides that the max amount of I.O. I could drive from a single client to a single volume is roughly 60,000 at max, 1K and 4K and 8K random read, 50,000 to 45,000, 40,000 ish for writes. That's to be expected. We did the same study on premises and found that 60,000 I.O. against one session is achievable there too as a maximum, which goes to show that cloud volumes and on-premises physical arrays behave the same. What's important also to see here is that a single instance is not capable of driving a volume to its end. Note for example the 1K random read I.O. on the left, 60,000 IOPS against the multiple clients at over 200,000 IOPS. At 8K we're at about 175,000 IOPS from multiple clients and from one instance again around 60,000 IOPS. Now we'll take a look at a sequential I.O. study. Just as the previous slide, blue represents single instance, gray represents multiple instances. The tests were the same. The procedure is the same. Note here that the max amount of I.O. that a single instance is able to drive is right at the four to four and a half gigabit per second line that was mentioned previously in the slide when referring to the single session I.O. limit on the right on the right side. We see the same throughput limit at about 500 megabit a second or about four to four and a half gigabit per second. Whether this is the egress limit through the virtual private gateway or the VPC limit, the answer is yes. Just as before as well, we see that a single instance is not able to drive the maximum capability of a volume. Here we're seeing around 20 to 50 megabyte per second for 16K, over 3000 megabyte per second for 32K and 64K. Now that we have a good understanding of how much work can be driven through a volume from either sequential or random I.O. from one instance or multiple instances, we can begin to think about quotas and service levels. If you think back, we spoke about the random workloads. You notice we spoke about it in terms of IOPS or I.O. per second. Now, quotas and service levels are considered in terms of bandwidth consumption or throughput need, which means we got to think about it in terms of megabytes per second. This changes the way we have to think about random workloads. Now, consider an Oracle database. 
a general table space will use 8K I.O. sizes. So how do you convert I.O. to megabytes per second? Let's take this example where an application needs 200,000 IOPS and those IOPS are 8K. Now in the end, we'll figure out we need 1,600 megabytes a second. How do we get there? Here's the formula. Required bandwidth equals IOPS times I.O. size, so 200,000 times 8K, divided by 1024 kilobytes per megabyte wherein there's 1,024 kilobytes per megabyte. So looking at the real math, we see 200,000 times 8K divided by 1024 equals 1,600 megabytes a second. Now that we've done the math to convert I.O. to megabytes per second, we can figure out how much quota we need. Again, a formula. Quota size equals megabytes per second divided by service level. Now we said before that the standard service level has 16 kilobyte per gigabyte, premium is 64K, and extreme is 128 KB per gigabyte. So if we know we need 1600 megabytes a second, we divide 1600 megabytes a second by either 16, 64, or 128K to determine the quota size at a given service level. Take premium for example. 25 terabytes is needed for 1600 megabytes a second. Now that we've calculated our quota and service level needs, let's go back and apply it to the graphs we created previously. 25 terabyte was the quota we determined we needed at premium level to consume 1600 megabytes a second. Well, it turns out at 8K random read, that's just about the amount of work that a single volume can do. If you were to go ahead and consume a quota of 100 terabytes or 50 terabytes, anything larger than the maximum that you can achieve from a volume, you're spending money on a larger quota without getting any more I.O. Now let's say on the other hand you wanted to do 32K random read. To do that, an extreme service level would work for you at a 25 terabyte quota. Same story as before, purchasing a quota larger than this, or setting your quota larger than this, won't garner any more I.O. Now pure workloads are interesting, but let's look at a 50-50 read-write workload. On the right side of this slide, you see the gray bars represent reads, the orange bars represent writes. I said previously that the 4.5 gigabit per second session level was bidirectional. Here's an example of that. Look at the single client 64K workload. That single client is driving about 1,000 megabytes a second, or just about 2x what the single session capability is because it's bidirectional. 4.5 gigabit read, 4.5 gigabit write is achievable. To achieve the numbers that we see here, a service level of extreme with a quota of 12.5 terabytes will do. At this point, you should know the cloud volumes is a very capable environment. You should understand the limits posed upon it, and you should be ready to go. Thank you.